Hi, I'm Dr. Lawrence Brock, and this is an ideal inner image, or an III. I'm using III partially because it does say ideal inner image, but it is also that this is all about you. It is about what you want. It is about what you know, and you want to be writing this all about your experience. If there is someone else in your ideal inner image, you do want positive things for them. For this, though, you're going to be focusing on your experience about what you want and what you're experiencing. It is important to write this down. A lot of times when I talk to people about this, they're saying, oh, I'm thinking about it. For this process, that does not work. So write it down. It can be on a piece of paper with a pen or pencil. It can be on your computer or even a document on your phone. Many times people sit down right away for a few hours and write everything down. I do suggest taking a little longer than that and going over it. Usually I will create a document on my phone and keep it there for a few weeks. So as I'm going around through my daily life, I can add things in like I'll just come across something go, oh yeah, I want to have that. And that way I can really get very clear about it. On the top of the paper, you want to write all this and more for the highest good. That way we're allowing for things even better than we can imagine to happen. I also like to actually say in the light, all this and more for the highest good. Or sometimes my personal preference is in the light of the Holy Spirit for the highest good. So we're charging it spiritually. There are a few ground rules to keep in mind. One is that you want to write everything as if it's happening in the present tense. So I am happy. I am healthy. I am making a lot of money. I am in a wonderful relationship. I have a good job. Whatever that is for you, sometimes there'll be, I am in the process, like I am running five miles a day. I am exercising. You also want to keep the items separate from each other. Most people want to be happy and healthy. But rather than writing down, I am happy and healthy, you would write down, I am happy. And then the next line would be, I am healthy. So it's keeping the things separate from each other so they're not contingent on each other. The happy and healthy is, well, you want to be happy whether you're healthy or not. You want to be healthy whether you're happy or not. Ideally, you're both happy and healthy, but you don't want it to depend on each other in case something happens. Two of the fun guidelines is are uh, don't let reality get in the way. And that is, if it seems impossible for it to happen, don't worry about that. There's another general guideline that is make it 50% believable. If you want to make $1,000, let's say, you want to work five hours and get paid $100 per hour, the numbers don't add up. Don't worry about that. Just keep writing down what you want and keep going with it. The other one that I find a lot of fun is the yeah buts. It's similar to don't let reality get in the way, but it is the yeah buts that they say, oh, I want to be in a positive, good relationship. Yeah, but this. I want to work for IBM. Yeah, but this. I want to be a lawyer. Yeah, but. So don't let those yeah buts get in the way. You do want to be focusing on yourself. It is all about your experience. It's important that you do not be trying to control someone else in doing this process. If there is someone else in your ideal image, still make it about your experience. Perhaps you're working on your primary relationship. It, you know, you want to be having a lot of physical contact or you want to be feeling loved. It's just that I'm feeling very loved by my partner or by my wife. And 
So you really want to focus on you. You don't want to be saying things about the other person because it will be attempting to energetically control them. A very, very important part of this is to check for the inner experience. A lot of times when people are doing this, they're wanting to create things externally, outside of themselves, like a new job, a car, a house, even someone for a relationship. Um, these are outer experiences, so you want to check, well, what would I be feeling inside if I had that? If I had a new job, and that's a good example because there might be different inner experiences. Um, one might be feeling honored or respected. One might be feeling good about the money coming in. One, you know, there's a, a number of different experiences. You might want all of these, but the inner experience is at least as important as the external experience. An example I like to use because it seems very clear is if you want a new car, one of the ex experiences, the thrill of going fast. Another one would be feeling safe in a nice new car. Another one would be the prestige of people seeing you in a new car and just feeling really proud of yourself. So those are three different inner experiences for the same outer experience. So whatever you're writing down, if it's an outer experience, check, well, what do I want to be experiencing internally? So if you're writing down, I have a new car, you say, I'm feeling excited about driving fast. I'm feeling secure. So you want to write down those inner experiences also. Include the small things that come up that might seem insignificant, but are very important for creating your happiness. Throughout the day, besides the big picture, the small pictures, the small situations really add to our happiness, to what is important to us. Um, for me, I had a couple of things come up when I was first doing this, is I like to wear comfortable clothes. Years later, I'm mostly working on the phone, I can wear very comfortable clothes. Um, it also, it just, those little experiences are just very important how you feel overall. Uh, some, do you want to be interacting with people? Do you want to be um, being creative? Do you want to be, you know, all these little parts of the day, you want to imagine what it would be like if you were living your ideal image. You, are you sleeping late? What, you know, what kind of slippers you have, if you have slippers, what kind of food you're eating for breakfast, all of these things that almost seem inconsequential compared to creating a job, a relationship, a home, it's important to include those in there also. Part of writing this out and getting very clear about your image is to start taking the steps to create what you want. And when you get very clear about it, as the steps appear, it seems more obvious. You're aware of what you're looking for, what you're going for in a way that just tunes you into it. And it's really a magnificent thing. There are four different exercises I suggest you do, and you can do all of them. The first one is important to do, which is to spend some time imagining your situation. Make it real in your imagination. Add in all the colors, the feelings and just spend time enjoying that. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to feel this. I'm going to, I can picture having a new car. I can picture my bank account full. I can picture the freedom and spend time imagining that and trying to experience it physically, mentally, and emotionally. If you're not very good at imagining, creating images in your mind visually, you can look in magazines, you can look online, you can look out in the world for places that would be similar to what you want to create and use those images to create it for yourself. After you're all done, one exercise to do is to read over your ideal image 100 times in a row, right in a row without stopping, so that means to create the time for yourself. It can take up to a couple of hours, depending on 
the length of what you wrote. I use a counter on my phone. So you do want to use something where you're using some physical movement to count them. So it could be writing down on a piece of paper. It could be clicking the timer on your phone or the counter on your phone. Some uh, initially I was taught to use toothpicks where you put a hundred toothpicks in a pile and move one over for each time. Any of those ways are fine to do. The second method is to read over your ideal image a couple of times, once a day for 33 days in a row. Simple as can be, just do it a few times a day, read over it, and at the end of the month, it really helps build the energy. The third one is to create an audio file of your ideal scene, which is you reading it in a very clear way, and then play it back to yourself once a day or a few times a day for more than 33 days in a row. Something I also do is sort of put it on low volume and leave it on a loop when I'm sleeping so it plays over and over again. If I really listen for it, I can hear it, but it's not interrupting my sleep at all. This is a great, great process. I will share, when I first started my practice, I had been working in a family electrical contracting business at the time. Electrical contracting is getting electrical work done, but a lot of it is very business, businessy business. And I was not loving it. I like to be loving what I'm doing. So I decided to change my career from something I knew that I had been doing for some years into something I'd been doing as a hobby, try to make a living to do that. So I wrote out my ideal image. I did these processes and things started to happen. The first thing that happened was I got a job for the county. This was a unique job because the, all the other trades were done by inmates. It was for the county penitentiary system to redesign their offices, to remodel their offices. And all the other work was done by the inmates Part of the contract was I wasn't allowed to be there at the same time as the inmates. And I think they were working from 10 at night to four in the morning. And I saw an opportunity to ask, part of the contract was it stipulated I had to work from eight in the morning to 4 p.m., which was standard for county contracts. And I asked if I could work from six in the morning to 2 p.m and then have the afternoon to focus on getting my practice going. They gave me permission to do that, and by the end of the job, my practice was going, making enough money to support myself. Um, another kind of cute little story is when I was writing my ideal scene, I kept seeing inside of me, and I want to have a lot of pretty women come to see me. First of all, a lot of yeah buts came in, a lot of the part of the reality, like how is that going to happen? A lot of judgments came in about myself, like, is that right? I'm doing this spiritual thing. And, but I knew I'm going to go with what came up for me. So I put that in my ideal image, did the exercises, and my practice took off very easily. A cool part of the story is a few months later, I met this woman who was a manicurist for all the high fashion magazines in Manhattan. And what I was doing at the time to get my practice going was anyone I came across, any phone numbers I had, any people I knew, I was asking them if they wanted to try a session, a healing session with me. This woman said yes. She loved my work. She got a lot out of it. She was a client for many years. And she started recommending these models to come see me. It's kind of a cute little fun story, right? I don't know what was it, where it came from. Whatever it is, it just really lined up and I helped a lot of people. Modeling is a tough, very stressful job that a lot of it involves a lot of rejection, uh, being perfect. I mean, 
stressful like any job, even though it seems very glamorous. I helped a lot of these women for about three years. Mostly my practice was that. Take the time to do this. Put the energy in, put the effort in. It is the easiest tool to create what you want. Remember, go for it and do it.